Welcome back, welcome back everybody. Monty here with the Mavericks. That's right, we're playing some more Battletech. Moving right along, it's going to be another priority mission today. Uh, we're just getting right to it. I did do uh, three mercenary missions. Really crazy. Uh, we got another uh, great mech or two, actually, in the, uh, the the missions. I might remember to put a screenshot up of the salvage from one, just one of those missions. Uh, and then, so that kept us up at that 10 million mark. Week 233, day seven. Command center, here's what we got going on. We got a lot of mechs, as you can see, that need some repair. But War Council, it's, uh, it's traveling back to Weldry. We got a lot going on there. It's a 28-day trip, so we've got time to get all the repairs in. I mean, our, our ship's fully upgraded, but we got some money, so we're going to hang out in the uh, zero-G pool <laughs> as we launch out. But I hope you guys are all doing fantastic. I uh, figure you've been, uh, if you're watching, you've been along for the ride. And uh, it's, it's, we're getting there. We're getting there. Where I am in, in real life, what just was announced, was the uh, the first of a few DLCs coming out because there's now a season pass which is on discount right now for Battletech is a flashpoint it's going to be coming out November 27th right before Metcon all work orders complete commander wow see look at that all that's done and still 22 days let me go show you the mech bay before we uh jump forward any more here just to make sure what I've got and what I want to do here so we have the Highlander 733p uh this one and we also got a banshee i think a two in one if i do remember correctly uh so we've got a lot of weight this banshee i don't know what i did with it but it's got like no weapons on it which is not right for a 95 ton mech what is what is wrong here oh i got you i mean look at it look i mean no no weapon slots no weapon slots uh, I need to get this AC-5 off of here. We're going to strip all the armor. And let's put in an AC... Wow, look at that. 20 plus plus plus. And, uh... Really, that only gives us... 10 tons for armor. I could drop down... The PPC... Let's see, what do we got? Seven tons. To a large laser, five tons. Give us two more tons of ammo. And uh, better on the heat. I'd like to get a special large laser, or if anything, put a special... Hmm. Plus ten damage. See, it's... I'm not really going to be able to use him as a tank. I mean, he's got all that weight, but it's in weapons and not armor, so he would still get popped pretty quick. So, things to think about. Hmm. Heavy brawler and sniper. I don't really see how I can... Oh, you know what? He's got a really strong melee attack. So, with that in mind, I mean, do we want the range? Oh, and I can put a laser there. Never mind. Let's get these guys off. Medium laser. Medium laser. Uh, what I'm thinking is... Oh, we could throw three flamers on here. Which, why would we want to do that? Because we can! Hmm. So with this... We need to get... Uh, where is it? Where is it? The ammo. AC-20. Got to get some of that. I like to just throw that down in the uh, the legs here. I don't think we're going to need those heat sinks in the legs. Because we're not firing that much. I do like all of these, though. Armor it up a bit more. So I don't know. I'm still not sold on the Banshee, but it's just so much beef. Way too much on the rear. 
And same here. Don't, I, you know, I'm pretty good about protecting the rear. Don't like getting surrounded. Um, so I'm going to put as much on the front as we can. The exciting adding of armor. There's weird numbers down here, and it's because of that. When you do that max armor, you can throw some things off in weird ways. Weird, weird ways. We're going to make uh, these torsos something to get through. That's a thing for certain, for certain. Uh, I'm actually going to drop that back. So we can go full out. Boom. All right. Four days. So instead of a PPC and an AC5, we've now got an AC20 with plus 20 damage and two medium lasers. Unfortunately, I don't have any specialty medium lasers. That's that's insane. All this and watch. I'm not even going to take the Banshee with us. We have a Zeus now. That's new. Uh, this guy's packing one, two, three large lasers and an LRM-10. More of a uh, distance fighter. All my guys are going distance right now. Like, Remember, the, the one we got from our last mission was the... Uh, we got a Gauss rifle now. Packing three medium lasers, two small lasers, and a flamer, plus an LRM-15. So that high, these Highlanders are something to be reckoned with. This guy's all up close in your face with SRM-6s. And a lot of lasers. So I know I'm taking the two Highlanders. And uh, what I was running with a lot was the two Highlanders and the two Jaegers. Um, large lasers and AC-2 pluses. And then this guy's got the uh, heavy on... He's got an LRM-20 and an LRM-15. Two medium lasers and two small lasers. So, pretty mean for 65 tons. And the Thunderbolt's still here with a bunch of lasers. So if we go somewhere cool, we got that. And then we got our dual PPC Grasshopper. So I'll figure out what, what we want to talk about there, but I'm just going to keep on keeping on five minutes in and... Uh, we're still moving. But we got to figure those things out because this is a big priority mission. We have no idea what's going on. We could just go talk to people and not even fight. You know, we could probably take the urban mech. Who knows? Strolling down the hall, you collide with Big Sky, who seems to be in a hurry. Oh, Commander, I was looking for Darius, but you'll do. Glitch is on the verge of a brawl with GV. They need someone to remind them they're teammates, not enemies. Uh, authorize Big Sly to deal with it. You say, good idea, All respects, uh, always respect the chain of command, and right now I'm commanding you to go deal with this yourself. Big Sly uh, salutes and vanishes back the way he came. Later you hear through the grapevine that the brawl came to nothing. No lasting consequences. Sometimes you just gotta let the, uh, the crew deal with it themselves. Work on the Banshee is done. But please feel free. Uh, always looking forward to uh, forward to looking at some comments on what kind of builds do you guys like to run? Uh, what what groups of mechs do you like to run? I'm wondering with the DLCs if we'll have a little bit more of a restriction on uh, on drop. Sometimes I think it would be nice to have a weight restriction or a cost restriction, kind of like the skirmish. I don't I don't know why, but being able to just beef up and then drop in, you know, I, I'm, I can go into a one planet star system with all my heavies. And I guess there's, there's the money versus maintenance and there's that. Uh, but some drops, it'd be interesting, but tis the mercenary's life. If we got the mechs, might as well drop them in, right? I don't know. The conversations as we travel back to Weldry. This was a long haul, probably. World record, uh distance trip for our campaign so far galaxy record 28 days come on Ready to go over financials whenever you spending are. them big bills oh I thought I'm like wait what we gotta spend how much now 800 to keep that morale at 50 cause you never know when some thing will come up 
all of a sudden and uh, hurt or help our morale. So just going to keep it where it's at. Here we go. Here we go. And I promise you that our forces are maintaining a firm upper hand against this false restoration. Thanks in part to the support of our newfound allies in the Torian Concordat. Just today, those allies, led by the heroic Commodore Samuel Ostagar, liberated my own daughter, Victoria, from insurgent captivity. And though the fight was hard, our new friends won the day through the strength of their courage and the virtue of their purpose. Soon, we will end this war. And when we do, we will turn our attention back to the expansion of our industry and the betterment of our people. Long live the Torian Concordat, and long live the Oregon Directorate! War Council, time to chat. Anna Maria, I summoned you here to discuss long-term strategy, but we have a crisis to address. You've seen my uncle's broadcast. What Ostergard did the did to Lord Corosus? What his wow? Did they actually like uh, broadcast that? What his soldiers are still doing to the people of Smithen? I am honor bound to ride to their defense. Don't speak of me of honor. Kamea, you've got much bigger things to worry about than Smithen. I won't mince words. Your cause is nearly lost. Uh, with only a small fraction of their fleet, the Torians have you dramatically outgunned. We'll take them in the Argo. Uh, given the chance, the Iberia alone could break your army in two. Why are the Torians fighting for the Directorate? Do you have any concrete answers? If you're looking for proof, I can't help you. But I can tell you what I think is behind all of this. The Perdition Massacre. A chemical attack on the Torian border system of Perdition that claimed 11,000 civilian lives. Hmm. Diplomatic incidents that's been raising tensions between the Federated Sons and the Torian Concordat. I believe that House Davion's attacks on the Concordat created an opportunity for Espinoza. And unfortunately for us, I believe that he has taken it. Hmm. You think Espinoza offered them his support against the Federated Sons? In a matter of speaking, yes. Protector Calderon believes that the Davion invasion of the Torian Concordat is imminent. In the Directorate, he sees a convenient pawn and a buffer to protect a poorly defended stretch of the Concordate's border. If the Directorate's weapons have been coming from the Torian Concordate, I imagine that they've had a secret agreement in place for some time. Yeah, the timing makes sense. By arming the Directorate, Caldarian would be fortifying his own border against invasion. When Espinoza learned about Castle Nautilus, he must have used it as a bargaining chip to get the Torians into war on his side. Boy, did we make a big change by blowing up all that stuff, huh? How you feeling now, Yang? In a limited intervention, but yes, Caldarian would have leapt at the chance to claim an SLDF armory. With a major war imminent, the capture of a fully stocked outpost castle could have provided the Torians with a tremendous advantage. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah, that's why we blew it up. But you destroyed the armory and killed their soldiers and apparently destroyed one of their dropships. I suspect that your problems with the Torian Concordat have only just begun. Uh, if he wants to hurt us, he has to find us. The Reach is a big place. We fought against the Torians on our true. We know what we're up against, so let's talk about how we're going to win this. Boom. Spoken with true confidence. Not through direct confrontation. If you let Ostergaard bait you into attacking him on Smithen, you will die, as will Lady Arano. This isn't hyperbole, hyperbole, Kamea. You will die if you take 
the field against him, and your restoration will perish with you. It's all rhetoric, yo. It's all... all. <laughs> uh, what would your... That was way too relevant. What would you counsel me to do then? Nothing? Your... Would you have me sit on my hands while a Torian butcher murders the people I've sworn to protect? Dang. I would advise you to lead your army wisely and to stay out of battles you cannot win. Kamea, listen to me. There is still hope, but you won't find it on the battlefield. Hmm. The alliance between the Torians and the Directorate is tenuous. Far more so than they would have you believe. Oh, we got to turn them against each other. Uh... Protector Kelderan knows what kind of man your uncle is. We could turn allies into enemies if we pay, play our cards right. Kelderan is supposed to be a sharp guy. It doesn't take a genius to see that trusting a usurper is a dangerous move. No, it doesn't. And even as we speak, my agents are digging for information that will open a rift between our enemies. For what it's worth, I am confident that they will find it. Hmm. But none of this will mean anything if you let Ostrogard goad you into suicide charge into a suicidal charge. Uh, so I beg you, ignore him. Stay away. Yeah, it is less risky than just flying right into him. She can't do that, Lady Contrella. You if you'd been here before we liberated the system, you'd seen the things we've seen. You'd know better than to ask Oh, Alex, calm down. I appreciate your advice, Anna Maria, but were I to follow you, the Oregon people would lose faith in me, and they'd be right to do so. I owe it to them to be better than that, and so I will fight. Nice, not playing the political game. But not in the way that our enemies expect. Oh, tell me what you mean. Ostergaard expects me to deploy my army against his forces on Smithen, to lead from the front as I have in our battles with the Directorate. You've convinced me that this is a risk that I cannot take. Well, yeah. And so, if he expects me to come at him with a hammer, I will use a scalpel instead. I trust that your company is up to the task, Monty. Oh, I was joking when I said we could handle it, but I guess that's where this is going. If the price is right, sure. My company, alone against the Torian Assault Force, uh, it'll be an adventure, Lady Arano. And I really don't have a choice. That it will, and I'll be guiding you on the comms every step of the way. Thanks, thank goodness for wireless internet, so you can just calm me from a nice, happy distance. You have my answer, Anna Maria. I won't take the field myself, and I won't redirect my army. But I'll be dan- Okay, so we're just going to sacrifice everyone, so you can keep your word. Thanks. This is getting crazier. Every, every little piece of text. All right. Your mercenaries have- been one of your key advantages in this war, Kamea. By doing this, you're putting them at grave risk. But if your heart is set on returning to Smithen, I am powerless to stop you. Instead, I wish you good luck and take my leave. I'll be in touch with my agents now more, but please. Kamea, stay safe. Okay, uh, I don't know if I can stabilize the Reach without you. I won't let Estergard kill me, Anna Maria. I promise. Lady Arano's contract to repel the Torian assault on Smithen is ready for review in the command center. We should follow up when you think we're ready. <sighs> yeah, that deserves a big deep sigh like that. What? Proceed to Smithen to protect its people from the Torians. Early reports suggest a tight battlefield. Because of this, we recommend a lance loadout that strikes a balance of mobility, durability, and firepower. Further details will be provided upon your arrival. No, give me the details now, because I want them now. All right, we all saw what the Torians did to Lord Carosis, to his entire palace. They haven't stopped there. They're butchering the people of Smithen, and we're gonna stop them. Well, that was interesting, and uh, they made us fly all the way to Weldry, so we can then now go fly all the way to Smithen. I'm actually gonna take a break to go 
pay off some bills here, and we're going to steal the prototype for a two and a half star capture base mission. Um, I'm going to take out the new build of the Banshee. I'm not going to show you guys that new uh, group of mechs until we actually go and defend at Smithen. So I'm going to keep these things in mind. Uh, we need to balance like everything. That's just normal balance, right? Like if we need, we need to be ma maneuverable, which is kind of eh, normal, uh, which might mean that there's some type of timed thing. I don't know. Let me actually go back up here so I can see what I'm talking about. So mobility, durability, and firepower. I'm just going to go pretty heavy, I'm thinking. Three skulls. But I want to hear what you guys think. That's why I'm going to leave this one here. Look at that. I, we have a, our first episode where I chatted for about 20 minutes. But we needed to. There was a lot of story. Uh, and there's a lot of planning going into this next uh, defensive mission. Which I have no idea what to expect. So I would like to hear what mech loadouts do you think I should bring it to the battlefield I'm going to do at least one mercenary mission beforehand so I don't know if I'm going to have any other mechs but here's here's what we've got to choose from we've got the Jaegers we've got an Orion sitting heavy don't ever forget about him with the AC-20 we've got our catapult K2 which is eh it's okay it's got some real nice large lasers on it though now the grasshopper the thunderbolts I'm not bringing the Irby but try to convince me of it um, two Highlanders, the Zeus, and now the new Banshee with the AC-20 and um, two medium lasers. But right in your face, that's pretty mean, and 95 tons. So he's kind of just Tanky McTankerson. Uh, but I don't know. Something's weird about that Banshee. I'm just not liking the uh, lack of weapons. Uh, no, or, yeah, yeah, I, I don't like that. So I'll catch you all, folks, next episode there you have it, folks. First episode without a battle. But next time, I'm going to... It's going to be a big one, right? Next priority mission is an actual thing. Uh, see, I told you we could have brought our urban to this mission. Because all I had to do was get out and do some chatty... Chatty McChattiness with the, the comms, which I'm still doing right now. I keep chatting on and not ending the episode. But anyway, uh, you know, there you have it. Another episode. And... Uh, on that note, I'll see you guys in the battle. Catch you next time.